Greetings, this is Sanbian's VIP magazine, VIP TV News, and I am Rohi Cham. First, a headline. <music> National Assembly summons Vice President to appear for questioning. Korosi says demise was not investigated, says lawyer Yusuf. Government institutions owe Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation more than 1.6 billion, Finance Minister reveals. Foreign Minister Tangara assures Cuban ambassador of Gambia's support. UDP accuses IEC of detrain on Sonko sacking. COVID-19 response team threatens strike over unpaid allowances. Now the news in detail. National Assembly summons Vice President to appear for questioning. The National Assembly of the Gambia has on Thursday summoned the Vice President, Dr. Aisa Tuturi, to appear before the legislature to respond to some questions. Moving for Sarah Kunda, Halifa Salah said the move aims to ensure that the Vice President appears and responds to the following questions. Why the motion for an extension of the state of public emergency for the period of 45 days with effect from Wednesday, 1st July 2020, as part of all the paper of 30 June 2020, was withdrawn? Has a state of public emergency been declared since the National Assembly commence session? And if so, when was it declared and under what authority? What emergency powers regulations are currently in force and under what authority? How the executive computes time to determine the expiry date of each of the declaration of the state of public emergency since 18 March 2020. He said that section 34 of the constitution empowers the president to declare a state of public emergency and section 34 subsections 2 indicates the expiration of a declaration of public emergency. He said section 34 subsections 2 reads, a declaration made under this session shall lapse at the expiration of a period of seven days or if the assembly is not in session, 21 days. Beginning on the day on which the proclamation is published in the Gazette unless before the expiration of that period, it has been approved by a resolution of the National Assembly. Supported by the votes of not less than two thirds of all the members thereof. He emphasized that any declaration by the president will expire within seven days if the assembly is in session and 21 days if the assembly is not in session. Halifa Salah said only the National Assembly is given the power by the Constitution to extend a state of public emergency so that it will not expire within seven days if the National Assembly is not in session or within 21 days if the assembly is not in session. He further said answers to these questions will provide sufficient evidence for the public National Assembly to determine whether the executive is acting in line with the letter and spirit of the Constitution it has taken oath to respect, uphold, and enforce or not. Salah further said he humbly moved that this August Assembly summons the Vice President to come and answer the three fundamental questions move. Members who took part in the debate on the motion congratulated Halifa Salah for the move and gave their support to the motion. The motion was subsequently adopted by the members and now awaits the Vice President to appear before them to provide answers to the aforesaid questions. Korosis's demise was not investigated, says lawyer Yusuf. Lawyer Abdul Meta Yusuf, the principal state counsel in the murder case involving Yankuba Ture, said Usman Korosis's death was not investigated by the state. Counsel Yusuf said this on Wednesday, 8 July, while objecting to defense counsel. AC Saho's application for the coroner's inquest in Ford in respect of the demise of Usman Kurosise to be produced by the judicial secretary. 
One of the subprints was for the court to order the judicial secretary to produce the coroner's inquest report in respect of the death of Usman Kuru Sisi, while the order was for the court to order for the executive secretary of the Truth, Reconciliation, and Reparation Commission to produce the official statement of the Edward Singati and his statement on the death of Usman Kuru Sisi. Abdul Mehta Yusuf said there was no police investigation with regards to the death of one Usman Kuru Sisi, which shows that there was no coroner's request. Yusuf said there cannot be a coroner's inquest without a police investigation. If there was no investigation, that means there was no coroner's inquest. Yusuf said adding such a document does not exist. Regarding the TRRC, lawyer Yusuf, in his objection, said Edward Singati is not a listed witness, witness in the case, and therefore, the official statement he made before the TRRC with regards to the death of Usman Kurosise is not relevant to the case. He said if the defense wants Edward Singati's state, statement to be produced before the court, let them bring Edward as a witness. 50-year-old Turi was a long-serving minister of local government and lands. Retired Captain Turi was also a member of the Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council after they overthrew the PPP 30-year rule. The former military officer turned politicians was accused of the murder of former Minister of Finance, Usman Kourosisi, under the AFPRC ring. The prosecution alleged that Turi is now a businessman, used a pestle-like weapon to murder Sisi in June 1995 at Toure's residence. Toure denied any wrongdoing as he pleaded his constitutional immunity, but the court entered a plea of not guilty for him. Government institutions owe Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation more than 1.6 billion, finance minister reveals. The Gambia government and six of its parastatals owe the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation more than $1.6 billion. Finance and Economic Affairs Minister Mamburi Nyai revealed on Wednesday at the National Assembly. It has been revealed by the head of the Finance Ministry that as of June 2019, the government of the Gambia, in fact, is the second biggest debtor to Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation behind the National Water and Electricity Company, NAWEC. Despite its continuous failures to provide consistent and adequate water and electricity to the people of the country, NAWEC is the biggest debtor owing Social Security a whooping $892 million. Government of the Gambia is the second biggest debtor to an owes ASSHFC the sum of over $421 million. The third biggest government institution is Gambia Granite Corporation, GGC, which owes the Finance Corporation more than $298 million. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority, GCAA, also owes SSHVFS a staggering $92 million. The finance minister also told the lawmakers that the state broadcaster, Gambia Radio and Television Services, GRTS, also owes Social Security $47 million. The institution with the least amount is Gambia International Airlines, GIA, owing just $15,982,000. According to records, eight institutions owe SSHFC, but Finance Minister Nyai only provided information on the six above-mentioned institutions. Minister Nyai, however, said mechanisms are in place to ensure these institutions will be obliged to pay their debts, and he said some of them have gradually begun paying. Be reminded that you are watching Sambians VIP magazine, VIP TV News, and I am Rohit Chan. Supersonics Money Transfer is giving you an unbeatable offer this Tobaski. 
Your family and friends can now send you monies from the whole of Europe, US, Canada and Switzerland for absolutely free. Yay! Yes! This Tabaski enjoy our safe, fast, reliable and convenient money transfer service with the largest payout network in the Gambia at zero transfer charges. So your family and friends wouldn't have to worry about transfer charges when sending you monies from Europe, USA, Canada and Switzerland this Tabaski. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Support your own. Tabaski just got better with Supersonics Money Transfer. Welcome back from that short commercial break. Be reminded that you are watching Sam Bian's VIP magazine, VIP TV News, and I am Rohit Cham. Foreign Minister Tangara assures Cuban ambassador of Gambia's support. The Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Mahmoud Tangara, on Monday, 6 July 2020, received the ambassador of the Republic of Cuba, His Excellency Sir Ruben Abilenda, at his office in Banjo. In his opening statement, Minister Tangara welcomed Ambassador Ablenda and recommended him for the continuous collaboration and support given to the Gambia's health sector by the government of Cuba. Minister Tangara used the opportunity to commend Ambassador Ablenda for his relentless strides in strengthening the already cordial bilateral relations between the two countries. The Foreign Affairs Minister informed Ambassador Ablenda of President Adam Abar's appreciation of gains registered in the strengthening of cooperation between the two countries over the years. He urged the Cuban ambassador to use the opportunity to promote exchanges and collaboration between the Gambia and Cuba in various fields. Minister Tanga assured the Cuban ambassador that relations will further be strengthened and support will be given to Cuba at all international fora. The minister emphasized that the Gambia's position on Cuba remains unchanged. In his remarks, Ambassador Ablenda thanked Minister Tanga for the support his country continued to get from the Gambia. He disclosed to Minister Tangara that the government of Cuba has approved a scholarship package meant to train a group of Gambian doctors and nurses on intensive care as specialty. A host of bilateral and international issues bordering on cooperation were also discussed by the two sides. Regionally, Ambassador Ablenda said, the government of Cuba recently dispatched a team of medical personnel to countries like Sierra Leone and Guinea Conakry to help fight COVID-19. UDP accuses IEC of deterring on Sonkosakin. The spokesperson of the United De Democratic Party has accused the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, of trying to run down the clock in taking a decision on Sirifo Sonko's dismissal. What is going on is very clear. The IEC is trying to run the clock down. If the law is very clear, why is the IEC not obeying the law? What is their justification for that? al Mamital told the Standard yesterday. It is not for them to listen to petitions, applications or comments, and it is not even proper for the IEC to come out and say they will take a decision in this way or that way. The law is absolutely clear. What they are expected to do is to comply with the law. Every other Gambian's obligation is to follow the law. If you want to challenge the validity of the law, the only place that is open to you is the court. But for the IEC to be engaged in this kind of process, I think a lot of Gambians will start losing confidence in them. He said, that is what the 1997 Constitution says, that you cannot make any law to produce the right that already exists or make a law to vary a court judgment. This is the law of the Gambia. So really, I think we all have a responsibility to hold our leaders accountable, particularly officers that have been created by law to be seen to be dallying with a clear directive of the law. It cannot be acceptable in a democracy like ours. People will lose confidence in our offices. 
The BAC chairman, Serifo Sonko, was recently expelled by the United Democratic Party, which renders his elective seat vacant, according to the Local Government Act. His deputy, Isman Jalo, formally notified the IEC about the development, but Chairman Sonko has since countered with his own letter to the election house, urging them to ignore Jalo's letter, which he said was forged and written without the consent of the council. However, the deputy chairman has written back to the IEC with the support of many councillors, reaffirming that his letter is authentic and a reflection of the state of affairs in the council of the sacking of Chairman Sonko. The deputy chairman urged the IEC to take his letter as the official notification from the council. The IEC chairman, Ali Momanjai, told the Standard on Monday the Commission was going to take a decision on the matter yesterday. Wednesday, but all efforts to reach the IEC officials from the chairman to the PRO proved unsuccessful as they would not pick their calls. The Standard contacted the deputy chairman of BAC, Ismail Jalo, who informed this paper that he has not received any notification from the IEC. COVID-19 response team threatened strike over unpaid allowances. The COVID-19 frontline health workers have threatened to go on a sit-down strike today unless the Ministry of Health addresses their demands. The workers comprise staff in the COVID-19 rapid response team, contact tracing, laboratory services, and the quarantine centers. The Gambia government has allocated $500 million to the fight against COVID-19. We demand the senior management of the Ministry of Health to consider our flights, or else we will have the option but to embark on a sit-down strike. We demand daily allowances of $750 to be, to be paid to us, dating from January 2020. We also demand our health insurance and accommodation to be paid. Seifo Singate, representing workers, told journalists at a press conference yesterday. He said the group is very concerned with their feeding and accommodation. The death of one of our colleagues triggered a request to request for immediate health insurance in case of another death among health workers. If our concerns are not addressed, we will lay down our weapons, he added. Also speaking at the press conference, Madam Fatuja, a member of the team, said, we have been channeling our concerns through the top senior management of the health ministry to ensure efficient service delivery, but they have been giving us more promises earlier this month. We had a meeting with the health PS, but our situation remains the same. She said issues such as a health insurance Feeding, accommodations, and allowances should not be compromised. Since the outbreak of pandemic, we have only received 5,000. We made inquiries but no, to no avail. But if the ministry fails to respond to our demands, we all will reconvene another meeting to decide appropriate action, she added. The Director of Health Promotion, Modun Yai, told the standard that the government is working on the demands of the protesting staff. This is the end of Sambian's VIP magazine, VIP TV News. Let's recap our headlines. National Assembly summons Vice President to appear before questioning. Kourosisa's demise was not investigated, says lawyer Yusuf. Government institutions owe SSHFC more than 1.6 billion finance minister votes. Foreign Minister Tanga assures Cuban ambassador of Gambia support. UDP accuses IEC of dishwin on some consulting. COVID-19 response team threatens strike over unpaid allowances. Thanks for joining us.